I'm not about to be like, oh, I'll get those niggas to be up and then I'll go get y'all, y'all don't come. What kind of bill is fuck? That's gonna be like, it's gonna be dumb. That'd be kind of crazy. <laughs> Who are we waiting on, Young Scholars? Eva? All right, Young Scholars. So I posted, hopefully it's there, the HTML editor that I use on the, the W3 Schools website. So I'm going to go over those three types of Cascading style sheets, the inline example, the internal example, and the external example. So as I showed all of you guys before and gals, by default, websites are defined with black text and a white background. So you notice here, we simply have our top heading and our paragraph text. Dylan, give me a new heading instead of my first, my first heading. My second heading. My second heading? Come on, give me something good. Like, what's the big news of today? Other than um, Rogers. A Apple event. Okay. Jonathan, what should I put in the paragraph tag? Give me any random sentence. Um, what might have happened? Um, new, um, new iPhone 15. Okay. Was it launched? Yeah. Yeah, today. Okay. So we'll do the new iPhone 15 was launched. So now when we run it, our new text comes up. If you want to do CSS in line, we do it on the same line. So we're going to change the color of our heading. What color should we make it? What's a color that's associated with Apple? Gray, black. Okay. We'll try gray. What kind of background color should we have? Black? I guess we could try it, but um, we might have to make the paragraph text white. Why would we have to make the paragraph text white? Because if the background color is black, then it would make the paragraph text like not visible because the paragraph text is also black. This is inline. It's only a oh, yeah. to that H1. Oh, okay. It won't do oh, anything. Yeah, it's not on the body part. Yep. It won't do anything to anything other than this header one because this is the inline example. So we go ahead and run that. Hopefully it works. Okay, nice, it worked. 
So notice how the entire row that that is on now has that background color of black. When you do it for the entire body, it will make the entire body whatever the change to the background color is. So you might notice if you make your background color, let's say purple, and this is the only area where there's text. It may only make that section purple. The rest may be white. It's entirely possible. So Dan, if we want to change our paragraph, what do we do inline wise? You have the example I just provided with the header one. What would you do if you changed the paragraph? No, Dan. Rob, are you here? What would I do? Yeah, I'm here. We said to change the, the background on the... Uh... Right. So I would do the same as I did here. I'd use Just... the style element equals quote color. What color do we want the text to be here? Now we can go white. White, which definitely means we need a background color that's dark. So what is our background color going to be? Um, black again. Black again. OK. And now what do you think is going to happen when we run that? Um, it's the background going to change to black and the font is going to change to white. Yep, but just for that line, that line yeah. just for that paragraph. So our Apple event will stay the same. The new iPhone 15 was launched. We'll now have white text with a black background. Make sense? So if we wanted to add a header two. Dylan, did you buy one? No. Well, let's just claim you did for the sake of argument. We can now make a header two. Dylan bought his. What's going to happen when I run that? Um, it's going to say Dylan bought his in the H2 style, which is more in the H1 style. Right. What's the tele color of the text going to be? Um, well, oh, um, well, there's no style specifically assigned to it, nor is there a style under the body. So I'm assuming no style. Yep. It'll just be random black text with a white background. See? Mm -hmm. And it's a little smaller than our header one is. Now, what if we do a header three and let's say Eva borrowed it. We run that same thing, but since it's a header three, it's a little smaller than the header two. But if we wanted to Instead of doing inline, like we did in these two examples, if we wanted to do internal, we would create a style tag. And we would put our code in there. So Let's use a body example, because Dylan seems to like this. What color do we want as the background color?
Purple, orange. What do we want? Um, we could do red. Okay, we're gonna have a background color of red. And then, what's our text color gonna be? We could do white. Hi. I can be on mute. So what happens now when I run this? Um, well, everything that's would be within the body in would be um changed. Changed to what? Changed to the red background color and the white text color. Okay. Is that what you were expecting, Dylan? No. No? Do you know why oh, yeah. that happened? Because it's not placed above the H1. One. Nope. Everybody sees that, correct? Because we have our style tag below our inline code here, they remain the same. However, if we were to move that up beforehand, it's supposed to overwrite it. But I guess because this is an HTML editor and not an actual website, it's not working as it should. So again, this is an example. I'll put it in such a way like I would if I was commenting on a Java program. This example is internal or embedded CSS. You'll always know if it's internal when you see the style tag and the text inside it. And this example here is an inline example of CSS. You'll always know because you'll see some kind of element within the tag. In this example, we're using the style tag. He got into the meeting, so I'm going to end the call. Excellent. So what is this code here that I've highlighted? Body, background, color, color. Um, embedded in CSS? Yep, it's just CSS though. It only becomes HTML when it's put inside the style tag. In this example, the inline code combines HTML and CSS code together. Now, if we were to have an external CSS example, you would put that CSS code into its own file. So let's say we'll call it apple.css. You would copy it and paste it into a file and save it as apple.css. Then, up in your header section, you would have to create a link rel, a relative link. You would identify it as a style sheet. And hyperlink reference it to apple.css close the link close the head tag but because they don't have apple.css stored on this server it's not going to run properly 
But if you had it up on a web server and you ran an HTML page or loaded an HTML page rather, the background color would be red, the text would be white. So let's play around a bit. with that code we had in the PowerPoint example. So is this going to do anything? Is this code going to do anything? No. Nope. We need to first put it within the style tag before we do anything else. And then is it going to run? Is anything going to happen now? No. We have no text for it to display. So if we create that same header again, what was it? Apple event? Yeah. Right? Well, it's, it's all on the right panel too. Thanks for the reminder. So we had Apple events as a header one. We had the new iPhone 15 was launched. As a paragraph, we had Dylan bought his as an H2, second level header, and we had Eva borrowed it as a third level header. So when we run this, What's going to happen? It's going to change the font from the default to Ariel Sans Serif. It's going to change the color. It's going to change the background color. So now we have kind of a what color would you say that is, Dylan? Like periwinkle, light blue. Light bluish. But how like, come even though we declared H2 here as a different color, how come Dylan bought his isn't that color? Because the body overpowers it. Yep. So if we change this from body to H1, and run it, only H1 is going to have this background color and colored text. H2 is going to be whatever color text this is, and P and H3 will probably default to the black and white. Let's see if that's what happens. Yep. So you can see Dylan bought his is a little darker blue. Evo borrowed it. It's back to the default. The new iPhone 15 was launched. It's back to the default. And that header one Apple event is the only thing with that periwinkle background. So what if we made that background color purple and made the text color what white orange what are you thinking green I guess white white now it would be white text over a purple background now what if we change 
Dylan bought his to be text color orange. Now we run that, it's orange. How come there's no background color there? Because there's no background color set for it. Yep, we haven't defined one. So let's define one here. Background color, what do you want it to be? Yellow? Green? Sure. Yellow. Yellow? Okay, now if we run it, it's all going to be orange text on a yellow background. Notice how, like I mentioned, the background color is only going to apply to the section you apply it to. Our P, our paragraph that has the new iPhone 15 was launched, has no background color. There's nothing applied to it. Eva borrowed it, our H3, has no background color applied to it. But again, if we change that H1 back to body and run it, now it applies to everything. or it should apply to everything. For some reason, Dylan, you keep tripping us up with that bought his stuff. <laughs> so again, if we change it back to H1, it only has that for Apple event. What would I have to add in in order to change P and H3? I'm sorry. What would uh, I have to add if I wanted to change the color and background color to our paragraph or our H3? Um, you'd have to add those same properties. So like eight, so like P and then color, background color, whatever. Yep. Basically H2, but change that to P. So what uh, text color should we have for the paragraph here? The new iPhone 15 was launched. Um, we could do blue. Okay, we'll make the text color blue. And what about the background color? I guess I'd like blue. Unless it's not defined in the... Well, I don't think that would look too good, though. All right. Blue on top of a blue. Uh, I guess we could do yellow as well. Okay. And then when we run that, what will happen? That specific text will, should um, change to the color blue and have the background color yellow. Yep. The new iPhone 15 was launched, should have a background color of yellow and blue text on it. You see how people tend to want to play around with these different color schemes? So if we wanted to make H3 different, we would do the same. H3, let's say, let's say white text on a purple background, or no, we did that already. <laughs> on a, a green background, we haven't used green. And if we run that, Eva borrowed it is now white text on a green background. But again, if we change H1 back to body, it should now make everything white text on a purple background. Let's see if it actually works this time. It's supposed to override everything, but I guess this HTML editor online is not our favorite today. So again, this is all referred to as internal or embedded CSS. As I showed you before, when you do inline, it's always on the same line. 
You're going to use the H1 tag along with the style element to change your color this way. Make sense, hopefully. So the two more common ways are this way. Internally, where you have everything in your style tag, or externally, where you copy that and paste it into a .css file. Usually you just copy it into Notepad and save it as whatever .css. And then you would use this, as I mentioned to you before, the link rel. You define it as a style sheet. Why do you think you have to define it as a style sheet? Because it wants to know, because you need to basically tell that you're using it as a CSS file. Like if you don't de define it, then it doesn't know what file it is. Yes, very good. So you need to define it as a style sheet because as you'll see when we get to JavaScript, Later in the semester, when you have JavaScript, you have to refer to it as a script, and it would be .js. All right, so I went through the three examples I had for us tonight. Um, I graded the HTML assignments that were due last night. Uh, about half of you did them. Um, so you got 50 out of 50 on them. Um, let's check. I don't think we have another assignment here due for a while. Dylan, when's the next assignment due? The CSS one, right? I don't think that's due until after the class on next week. Dylan, am I correct? I didn't see a due date, unless that's in the syllabus, but like I didn't see an assignment post. Okay, so there's no assignment for this week, right? Good. Yeah. Okay. Nope. So uh, let me yeah. check my- Yeah, course. none of the folders. The next one I see is the project proposal rough draft, actually. Okay. I don't see a CSS assignment yet. Okay. So next week, we're going to talk more about CSS. We're going to basically go over some visual elements and graphics. The following week, the 26th, we'll be back in person. And that date, we're going to go over specifics of web design. Um, so since you guys have no homework, what should you work on this week, Dylan? The project proposal. Yeah, work on putting together that little project proposal rough draft that's due um, October 2nd. And then when you come into class face-to-face, -face, um, so again, next Tuesday night will be remote. The following two weeks will be face to face and I'll send you an email because that room we met in uh, our first class session on the 29th of August, they switched our room for some reason. Um, so Dylan, it'll be your job the night of the 25th to send me an email uh, to remind everybody about the room change. I think it was, we moved to university, Universal Hall 28, but don't quote me on it. I'll have to double check. Yes, Rob. Um, so if there are no questions, I bid you all adieu. And um, going forward, like I said in the email, I'm just going to post the Zoom meeting info right on Blackboard instead of emailing everybody since I think ad drop day is about to pass. So if there's no questions, I will see all of you on Zoom next Tuesday night. Enjoy the rest of your night and hopefully it's still warm out and you can enjoy it still.
feeling and getting to see you out there. Have so, a good day. Thirty-one is in the box. Um, okay. All right, question for Roger. 